Oftentimes, the amount of data that needs to be put into a grid is more than what can be digested at one time. The paging feature allows you to narrow down the amount of information that shows on a grid and also gives you control as to what you'll see and how you can jump to different pages in the grid in a quick and easy way. So this demo moves away from using a data source that's defined right there in the script and now references a JSON representation of the Northwind database. So this is the products table that's being bound to the grid. Now I'm still not doing any sort of async requests or anything, it's just a reference to a JavaScript file that has those records in it. But there's more data than I had before in order to exercise the paging feature within the grid. So first of all, you'll notice that I have the option here with this drop-down list to say how many records I want to show within a page. Now this is a configurable amount, so I can choose between 5, 8, 10, and 20. I'll leave it at 5 for now. Down at the bottom of the grid, you have the pager UI controls. So you can switch between individual pages using these buttons, or you can use the previous or go to first and go to last page buttons to go directly to the ends of the data within the grid. The API viewer down here is listing out information from all the events that are firing. So you can see that as I change the page, the page index changed event is fired, and then the rendered event is fired as well. And I'll show you how to handle those in code. Methods that you can call include the page index and page side. So I can say go directly to page two with a call directly from script, and I can even change the page size. So I'll set the page size to three, which I can do with that button. And it's all done with a simple call against the paging API. So the first step in enabling paging is to make sure that the loader is bringing in the paging resources. So this will bring in the CSS and JavaScript that I need in order to configure paging within the grid. Another thing that you'll notice, like I mentioned, that I'm bringing in the products table from Northwind. Again, I'm trying to keep things simple. So as you'll notice here in this file, this is just static content. I'm not hitting a service. I'm not doing any sort of data access. This is just the JSON representation of the first 20 records within the Northwind products table. But if you did call a service or you had some other way of accessing data, eventually it would exist as JSON objects in memory. So this is much the same as what you might do if this were set up as a true client server type of architecture. So I'm just bringing in the data there through the script reference. And now when I go to instantiate the grid, you can see here that I'm accessing the table through the ID of grid, initializing the grid, and then setting up the columns that I need that are associated with the data coming from the Northwind table. Now to set up paging, you access it through the name. So the name is paging and I can initially set the page size to five. And then with the page size list, you have explicit control over what shows up in that dropdown list. So here I said five, eight, 10, and 20. The events that I'm handling include page index changed, pager rendered, and page size changed. So in the page index changed, you have access to that page index. With pager rendered, this event fires each time you change a page. So anytime something significant is happening with the grid regarding paging, pager rendered will fire. And then for page size changed, you have the ability to access the page size that it was changed to. The methods that I'm calling are for page index, I can explicitly set the page index that I want the grid to jump to. And by doing that, all I need to do is pass in the index of the page as its destination. And I can also change the page size by calling the page size method and pass in the amount of rows that I want to show up within each page on the grid.